So my name is Ignacio Sirac. I am a Spanish physicist working in theoretical physics. I'm employed at the Max Planck Institute of Quantum Optics in Garching, Munich, and my work is research on quantum physics, and in particular in finding ways of how to transform and uh, transmit and process information using the rules of quantum mechanics. Yes, well, first of all, uh, an important stage was when I was studying physics because at that time you had good teachers and uh, I had a very good teacher who drove me in the direction of quantum physics, so his name was Alberto Galindo, he's a mathematical physicist. Then my second stage is when I went for a postdoc to visit uh, Boulder in Colorado. I was working together with a great scientist, uh, Peter Zoller, who became my mentor and after that my collaborator. And there started a very close collaboration that have lasted basically till now. Maybe the third stage is when I got a position at the University of Innsbruck. And at that time, the field of quantum information, the field where I'm working, was exploiting. And I had the chance to be in the center of the world because in Innsbruck there was a lot of things going on. So I was very lucky. And the fourth and last one was when I was joined the Max Planck Society in 2001 and had the privilege to be director of the theory division of the Max Planck Institute of Quantum Optics, where I'm working now. Yes, well, in particular, I think that the person who had the uh, most influence was uh, Peter Zoller, and so it's because I started working with him, so he's the one who showed me what research was, how to do research, and uh, he not only taught me um, science, but also taught me how to do science. Apart from that, I can mention several collaborators, but I would uh, say that probably my uh, students and postdocs with whom I worked have been also a great influence in my, in my scientific career. And there are I mean, three or four postdocs who really made a change in, in my life. I will not name them because uh, I will not single out three or four because there have been many. But I have to say that young people and people older than me influenced my career very much. Yes, well, very, very, very happy to do that, and I have done that all my life. So you look at my, the papers, the scientific papers that I have published, I would say that a big deal of them, maybe 30% or 40% are with collaborators that are not, are not working at the place where I'm working. So collaboration has been uh, very essential in my career, not only with other theorists, but also with experimentalists and international collaboration, so had with, apart from uh, Innsbruck and Peter Zoller, the person that I mentioned, so with uh, many countries, the US a lot, and uh, also Spain, because I'm originally Spanish, and uh, France, uh, England, so many, many, many places. And regarding the uh, young collaborators, apart from the ones that I had in my group, it turned out that I also had uh, some collaborations with people who had been, had contacted me, or maybe I knew that they have done some work and I have contacted them. And after some discussions we have met and also worked together. So for me, it's a, it's a basic part of research to talk to people. So there, um, I don't know, I had, uh, there is, there is a, a scientist that I, who I, I admire very much. He's called Andy Yao. So he's a computer scientist. He was a, he's a very famous computer scientist. And uh, so he, one of the things while he became famous is because he uh, realized that uh, in, quant in computational physics you can have much more power if you not only ask a question and wait for an answer, 
But if you ask a question, wait an, uh, for the answer, then after the answer, you ask a second question if there is a dialogue. So dialogue gives you much more possibilities, many more ideas, and that's what collaboration is. It's an interchange of questions and answers which open up new questions, and in this way, you can explore things that you otherwise would never explore. Well, it, it, uh, I guess it requires different um, values, um, but so one of them I think that is very important is not to follow trends. So not to do what everybody says that one has to do, but to go in different directions. And so when you see that everybody is working on something, so maybe turn a little bit and explore directions, even though at the beginning they are not trendy, they are not what everybody is doing. Well, the second, uh, the second one is that you have to work hard. So science, like every job, is a question of luck, of uh, maybe you, have, you should have a good noise, nose, a vision, but that's a lot, of, a lot of work. And the third thing is what I said before. So sometimes in order to ask the best questions and uh, also uh, to find the most important answers, and you need to uh, control what you think and to uh, interchange ideas with other people, so collaboration would be another important side. Okay, so um, at the moment uh, we are working on different areas of uh, quantum physics. So one of them is quantum information, so we try to build and to show how to use a computer that works with the rules of quantum physics. It's not that the computers that we have, it's not like the computers that we have on our desk, it's not even like the computers or the supercomputers that are around the world to do calculation. It's a computer that still does not exist but works in a completely different way than all the previous computers because it follows the, lo the laws of quantum physics. That's a huge challenge for, I think, mankind, with a challenge like it could be, uh, um, you had another uh, prize winner today, uh, uh, Tansman, or Professor Tansman, and, and so he has also a very big project, a huge challenge how to measure um, gravitational waves. Building a quantum computer is also a huge challenge, it's something very difficult, but once we have it, then we will enjoy it because it will be able to address problems that otherwise we'll never be able to solve. And in this challenge, so there are many people participating and we are trying to see how to build it, how to overcome the problems, but also what to do with it once we have it. So why, we, what, why should it be useful? Maybe a second, second area of research is that we are trying to uh, uh, develop some theories to describe the macroscopic world, the quantum world, the, the world of quantum physics. And it turns out that this world is very difficult to, 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 to describe. And uh, so it's, it's um, I mean, it was recognized already by very famous people like Richard Feynman, that if you want to uh, understand what is going on in this microscopic world, then the computational resources that we have around, we are not enough to do that. So this poses new challenges and uh, new theories there are many people trying to address this problem and to be able to describe this microscopic world when you have many, many particles. And so what we're bringing is a different perspective, the perspective that we learn from quantum computer also to try to address this, this, uh, this important problem. And so that's the second of my passion and even obsession. You know. And uh, so I think that it's, you see, quantum, um, well, I guess that scientists, if you ask uh, why do they have passion in what they have, they will find many reasons, and I can give you my reasons, but I guess that for you would ask, and biologists will give reasons that would be as good as mine. But my, my, my reasons is that quantum physics puts together some things that is really fascinating. On the, on the one hand, it uh, questions the vision that we have in nature. It says that the objects, when we are not observing them, they don't have the properties defined, they don't have position, they don't have velocity. It's not that we don't know, it's that they have not defined that. And that's even a f almost a philosophical statement. So this changes completely the way that we think that nature is, 
because things are not defined until we, we, we see them. So this is the first, uh, let's say, lack of this passion. So it's related to philosophy, very fundamental question. The second is that it uh, contains some uh, uh, theory that is not very easy to understand. So it requires mathematics and relatively complicated mathematics. And I like mathematics. And so that's a second uh, say lack of the, of, the, of the reasons. And the third one is that it has applications as well. So you're able to understand the philosophical part more or less and develop the mathematics then there will be something that the society could benefit from. And so I think that quantum physics has all these three things and there are not many other sciences that have that and this is why it makes it very different and very appealing for somebody like me and many other say, uh, scientists who are working on that. Well, this, this happens basically on, on its own. So, because uh, the, I mean, we have the fortune that our field of research is in the newspapers. So, there, uh, Google and IBM are building quantum computers, and it appears in um, in in, in the newspapers and in other media. And so, I guess that that's on the one hand. So, I guess that the the the, the um, Students know that know this this uh, science, and the second one, the second reason is the, the that these three qualities that I or properties that I mentioned before make them make uh, quantum physics a very unique science, very attractive for young students. So we don't have to do anything to attract them. Actually, <laughs> they come and they come too many. So we have many many applicants for a, a PhD in in our groups in other groups. So I guess that we hope that things continue like that. Well, um, it, it has been uh, given because of my work related to uh, quantum optics and quantum information. So quantum physics and in particular quantum optics relates to the interaction between light and, uh, and matter at this quantum level. And so in the past I've been working on describing this interaction and showing how this could be used in order to build quantum devices, quantum computers and other quantum devices. And also doing a theory, I mean, just working together with some many people on developing a theory of information that is uh, based on quantum physics, or a theory that will be behind how all these quantum devices work. And, uh, and the third part is this, what I mentioned about uh, uh, many body, f well, this quantum physics and the microscopic objects, this is also related. And the three, I mean, these three subjects have been mentioned in the, in the, in the award. And what I think about that, well, it's a great privilege. You just have to look at the n names of the people who have obtained this medal before, not only because people like Schrodinger or Einstein got it, but if you look at the last 20 years, that's an amazing uh, list of, of names. So it's a real privilege that my name will appear together with these this, uh, great scientists. So I really feel privileged. Yeah, so um, I was very, very <laughs> actually lucky in the past and very honored by several awards. And so probably the most important ones or the ones that came closest to my heart. First is probably the Wolf Prize uh, given by Israel, then the Franklin Medal from the US. Um, then there is the Carl uh, Zeiss Prize, it's also German, and the Hamburg Prize, they're also German. And then some ones that have been given in Spain that are very famous in Spain, maybe not that much in Germany. One of them is the uh, BBVA Frontiers of Knowledge Award. So actually, it's a great prize. So because I mean, they they they, <laughs> they give you a lot of money if you <laughs> win this prize. And also the Prince of Asturias uh, prize that for a Spanish person is a very very important prize. And many of these prizes I got together with my mentor Peter Zoller. 
in fact. And I have to say that, maybe I should have said that before, that because the prices are as, as, as something that they single out a person or two persons, but uh, the price go for work that has been done by, by many people, by not only by uh, Peter Zoller or myself, but also by our groups, our collaborators, junk collaborators. And even I would go a little bit beyond and would say that I, they also honor a little bit the field, you know, the field in which they are working, that they single out one or two people once in a while, but then they are uh, saying that this field has had some progress and, and there's a whole community, how this, uh, and the, the way this happened. Well, so there is, a, there, there is a section which is the atomic, molecular, optical and plasma physics. That's the one that we are participating now. And that's the natural uh, one that corresponds to the main area of research. So my younger students and postdocs, they typically come here and they give some talks. And it's a very good opportunity for them not only to learn from other people what they are doing, but also to present themselves in public and to show how they can present the results. So it's an important part of their education. And then there are some other DPG meetings that are maybe collateral to my work, the one in condensed matter physics or some other ones to which some of my students go. And uh, I once, I mean, I go also next week, I'm going in fact to another DPG meeting to give a talk. Okay.